So, but I'm gonna do the little segue. Yeah, sure. I hope I don't run from uh, Cliff. Um, so our problem was as follows. So we we thought like, wow, we're we're developing these cool tools and stuff, but nobody wants to play with it. So it was really frustrating because in the end, you want people, you know, you wanna you wanna sit on a on a bus or a tram in Antwerp, and you wanna see people using your app, of course, um, and. Um, so we were constantly looking for communities that, that would, would, you know, wanted to work with this or, or, or would, would want to experiment with what we're doing. And then suddenly we met Arcade City. Um, and Arcade City is, is like a bunch of people in, uh, now mostly in, in, in the US. And they have a great community. Uh, do, uh, does somebody know Arcade City here? Oh, okay. So it's, 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 it's been called in the press like the Uber killer. But it's also the Airbnb killer, and it's like the, the whatever centralized sharing economy killer. Um, uh, so basically what they wanted to do was, they said like, okay, in, uh, they have formed a community, which is quite big, they call it the swarm, of people that give ride shares, that basically do Uber kind of stuff, um, but without the Uber. So now they're organizing on Facebook, and they just use hashtags uh, where they say, I need a ride to Austin, and then other people, you know, say like, okay, I'll give you that the ride to Austin, they, and they pay with cash or with Bitcoin, but they don't. Well, they didn't have like uh, any technology, basically, which was a problem because uh, um, uh, Chris David, the guy that started it, um, he's a, he's like a big talker, but the problem is that you know he didn't have any technology to show for. It. And suddenly we realized, like, yeah, but when we when we uh, heard him talking about his vision for Arcade City. We thought, like, yeah, but this is exactly what we are making in locals. We have, you know, we have figured this out, and, and we have this technology ready to at least start prototyping this. Um, so we got in touch with these guys, and uh, that it's what mo one month ago. Yeah, it's it's everything is moving so fast. Somebody told that already. Uh, uh, you said already. It's insane how fast shit is going. And so yeah, we met them like four weeks ago, and 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 like uh, on on uh, in one week we're doing a token sale with them, you know. So so I, I'm re I'm really nervous uh, even now because I probably have to choose like on November second if I'm gonna quit my job at the city and do this or not, or maybe it's, it fails and you know. So it's that's that's uh, I think a point that people working in in, in blockchain or starting up blockchain stuff. Um, don't always realize, but it, it's really stressful. <coughs> no, really, it's really stressful because because you have all these uns uncertainty. But until now, we you know we worked for the city, and it was like all a game. Yeah, we're doing this funny blockchain thingies, but yeah, maybe in a week it becomes our job, and we need to make sure we create value because otherwise our wives will be really mad that we can't pay for our house. And stuff. <laughs> so it's 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 really risky. But so yeah, just to segue to that. Uh, how are we going to do that? I don't know. Uh, but uh, so yeah, we we are we are building now the Arcade City prototype. So I just uh, I would like to show that to you, and then you can ask like tons of questions, like how does this work? Why does this work? Why doesn't that work? It that's what we have been. Yeah, also, I think it's uh, I'll use a okay. I think it's a better example of uh, like because the demo of the locals world is now because it's so crappy now. I think the um, demo that we can give of the, fun the current functionalities of the, the Arcade City demonstrates uh, the way that we want to design uh, these apps um, and how to present them to users so you will notice, or hopefully you will notice. Um, is this recorded? That is... Um, I hope my screen is clean. <coughs> so that it's um, not really about making a, a blockchain application, but just to show people that um, they're just interacting with each other and exchanging value so it contains all these um uh -huh. all these elements. So, yeah sorry I, I didn't check my it's like really my user account you're seeing on my computer so. i didn't want to make a political statement it's by accident <laughs> <laughs> okay almost almost there I think you have Fluxon, right? I have what? Flux. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 sure. 
Yeah, it's late already. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because I have this tool that, you know, that tells me I have to go to bed. And I always put it on movie mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so what you're seeing is just two iframes. Do you all remember iframes, right? I, I thought it was so funny because we're doing all this blockchain stuff. And then in the end, I just had to program an HTML page with two iframes, which reminded me of when I was 18. Um, so, um, it was just frames, right? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Everything was so much easier then. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused with my screen here. Easy to hack too. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun, though. <laughs> so, uh, I'll. Sorry, I'm struggling with these screens now. Um, okay. Now what happened? Okay, there we go. But I have to change the... Can you start talking? Because I have to change... <laughs> <laughs> you have to speak up, uh, yeah, I have to change this config because our ether node is not syncing like it used to. So let me just change to this one. Always the charms of doing a live demo, of course. Yeah, it's live. But the, one of our so the thing, is, it's not completely decentralized because it's quite impossible now to run an uh, Ethereum node uh, inside a browser or in, you know in the phone. So we still use um, several nodes. We just set up like quick uh, boxes on Amazon. Um, yes, yeah, like Augur does it. Like anyone, everybody is uh, doing it like that now. So. So the thing maybe uh, technically is that uh, we are using uh, a local wallet, so it's called Light Wallet. It's, it's also an open source project that you can, uh, can follow, um, which allows you to sign transactions on your device itself. So in, in that way, it doesn't become necessary to run a known uh, Ethereum node and to unlock your account to start signing transactions for you, etc. So we just have the public and the private keys stored on the device itself. It's also generated offline because it doesn't need any network connection to generate a new public and private key pair. And we can just sign transactions on the device itself and then just transfer the, the signed transaction onto the, the blockchain. So we just need any <coughs> available uh, Ethereum nodes which we can access. So we don't have to sync everything and don't have to store like the whole blockchain or even a light uh, version of the blockchain on the device itself. So it's only the app only the the wallets and it's all signed locally so that's yeah. all those and so it's the same thing as, w as i just showed with locals we just recycled everything we already did of course and and you know put a different style on it <laughs> um, uh, so uh so what can you do like today you can just create a user and upload it uh, upload your picture it will be on ipfs uh it's like uh the same thing um and so on, it's just two instances of the same app. It's just on, on two different ports running. Um, so on the right hand side we have FemRights. It's it's a it's a, a rider service only for women. That's something that people are looking forward to. And it's yeah, I use that as an example because now Uber can do this because it's discrimination. According to the law, you cannot just say, "Oh no, I'm only picking up picking up uh, women or black people or, or gay people or whatever." You can't do that because it's discrimination. Um, but uh, like my wife, uh, she if she goes out, you know, like a, to a club, she, she she thinks she would feel much safer if she can choose a female driver. And so in Arcade City, because it's decentralized, we can do this. We can start a new cl club of people, uh, women, that say, okay, we're going to organize around this idea of offering other women um, um, rights. Um, are there any women here? Uh. Okay, so that's that's also something we see in, in Arcade City now. We're organizing with this big community, and we see that women are like the best community organizers. There we have like Christine and Jen, and you can you can check these people on our Hangouts and on, on our YouTube channel. So that for some reason we see there's like this natural split that the guys are doing the development, and and like the women are now doing the community organizing and and, and picking our stuff and bring you know trying to get people to 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 uh, use it. Um, anyway, so this is Janine. 
uh, she has like a, a, oh yeah you should remember how many coins she has because we're going to do a transaction so Janine uh, wants to leave the this is where we are now I guess uh, and Janine wants to go to Amper or what, I'll, 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 I'll think something nearby out of but how do my house I don't know what it is so what we do is we, we calculate like um, yeah we do an estimate of the cost based on the time of the ride and the and the, and the destination. Uh, later we'll create an oracle that you know that 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 will look at okay what are like the the, the medium prices in this area at this time. Um, but it's just like uh, uh, yeah it's an estimate. So uh, in our prototype. Uh, you can now publish the offer. So what we did is, I can show this maybe here in the console. What? Well, yeah, maybe you, you can you can point out some shit in the console. Yeah. So the thing we done now is so we sign a transaction to publish a new offer. So we have a smart contract uh, containing all the the current offers. Um, so when we send it to the to the blockchain, we get uh, the transaction hash. So we, we get a confirmation that it's entered into the network. But at that moment, it's the transaction is not yet, uh, let's say, put in, into a block. So we're just waiting for the next block to uh, to occur, and then that um, so that write request will be on the blockchain in our smart contract. And at the other instance, so that's the instance, for example, that you see here, there you just have a list that is constantly listening uh, to that contract and in case an event like there's a new offer uh, coming up, it will pop up here uh, as soon as the next block is mined. So now, we, of course, it has the, the tendency to, to look slow, but in reality, these two people, they don't do it uh, next to each other because someone is in a, in a pub or somewhere and they just want to have a ride. And then on the next block, they will, um, it will appear for all the riders, so they, they won't see the, the, the difference. So, also, we're now just doing it uh, by inspecting and looking at events on the blockchain. But as you, as we mentioned earlier, uh, with locals, we are using Whisper to do point-to-point -point communication. Um, but Whisper doesn't only allow to do point-to-point -point communication; it also uh, allows to do one-to-end communication. So we can just publish on a channel. Uh, for example, here the fem rights might be a whisper channel, and then all write requests for uh, fem rights will be published via whisper, and then we can already advertise an upcoming new write request on the other screens even before the transaction is actually mined. So I don't know what we are waiting for now. Yeah, we're waiting on Ethereum. So yeah, that's that's the. That's, it's really annoying. I mean. I've been working on this app to, to you know the last two days just to speed it up, to speed up the interface. <coughs> and you know it's really snappy, you know, you can click around and stuff, but once you do a transaction you you have to wait, you know, on the next block or maybe on the block after that. So I was just talking to Yuris where, where is he? Oh, he's still there. <laughs> so uh, I was talking to Yuris about that and he says like yeah that you know, I don't think we have a solution for that yet because you know we have to wait until the transaction has been uh, mined, I think. So, it's working? It's working? Okay. Maybe it's the interface that's not refreshing. So, Oh, there it is. It is there. It just came in. So you see, if you if you do the transaction and, and, and you do it like just before or just after the, the, the block uh, is there, then you have to wait sometimes for like uh, a minute even. Um, and sometimes it's like in five seconds. So that's, yeah, that's really... What it is, anyway. So uh, the fem rights, um, she can now, uh, you know, check out this offer, and she can claim it. Um, Maybe I can explain. Yeah, why don't you I'll, 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 I'll already hit that button because we're, we will be waiting on blockchain. Yep. So the thing is, we are uh, planning to uh, to use Arc coins uh, <coughs> to to make the system work. So as a means of payment in in the ecosystem. Obviously, you can enter the, the ecosystem by buying RC tokens on an exchange. You can exit that system by selling your RC tokens on an exchange. So there you have, um, like the let's say, the, the link to the, to the real world and, and actual money you can spend in the real world. Um, 
But the idea here is that once we have created cryptocurrencies, so the ARC tokens, we can do any kind of monetary transaction with that. And the type of transactions we are doing now is the equivalent of an escrow arrangement. So the thing that happens is, so uh, on the left-hand side, we have Janine wanting a ride, or needing a ride. She will put 18.65 of her ARC tokens on an escrow contract. And if the, so the, the lady there, Femrides, wants to pick uh, up Janine and she wants to claim that. So I don't know if you already did that. So yeah, I claimed it. I'm waiting for the block. So if she claims it, she will also put 18.65 of her tokens on the escrow contract. So uh, Janine, she now has a, a certainty that if her right is claimed, that Femrides here has put also money on the contract. So that's her guarantee that she will come and pick her up. And on the, uh, the other hand, Janine has in fact already paid, or she has at least proven that she has the necessary <coughs> coins to pay fem rights once the ride is completed. So once the, uh, it's, it's uh, very slow here, but if um, if the ride starts and oh, after the confirmation? Yeah, is there. So now it says claimed? Yeah. So now when uh, Janine uh, waits for, uh, for fem rights to pick her up, and she does the ride, and afterwards, uh, Janine can say, "Okay, it's okay." She yeah. Now they're driving. They're driving, um, and so if you click on Janine's rides, now she can release the offer. So if she says, "Okay, I'm happy with everything," uh, we don't we don't have any discussions about the the quality and the service, etc. She can send uh, the payout. So again, we are doing a new transaction, and we are dissolving. The, the escrow contract. So, uh, Femrides will receive two times her uh, her coins, or 80.65, uh, one, the ones that she put in, and the ones uh, that Janine offered uh, for the ride. So, and then basically the transaction is done. Uh, in a minute, you will see the the interface also I, I updating that it's uh, that it's finished. I can maybe also show what I'm doing here. So I'm on Etherscan, I, I, I copy paste the transaction hash and then I'm hitting refresh like every freaking second. Okay. Uh, so this is testnet, right? This is testnet, testnet. yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, does anybody know here maybe if it's gonna be faster on, on the real net? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, right? So I had a question, if you try test RPC, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, to, to develop, but we, but you know, we want to show this to the community, and they uh, want to let people play with it. So yeah, yeah. But for to especially when we're doing uh, the the smart contracts, when we're doing Solidity, we use the test RPC. But you know, for this, we we want to you know we, we especially I want to get a feel of I want to be this frustrated when I'm developing. You know, like when you're doing, I'm like we're always you know like. Why is it so fucking slow? But that's a good thing because that forces us to constantly try to make it uh, faster and snappier. So the idea with uh, with blocks is that you uh, and so if you would if you would uh, accept a uh, transaction after it's in the next block, mm -hmm. then it could still be that some other part of the blockchain catches up. So it would be delivering a service before it's actually uh, true. So uh, anyway, sorry, I, I'm not following yeah. there. So, so you actually oh. have to wait for a couple of uh, new blocks uh, before you would actually trust. Uh, exactly yeah. right. So it will be even. Yeah. So what we want to do is just you know over, send over whisper immediately a message like this transaction is pending. So at least you know if if you see this person is really trustworthy and, and has a lot of coins yeah. or has done lots of rides and transactions, um, some drivers might say like okay i trust this enough that I, i'm already gonna you know start negotiating about this um yeah we have been thinking about different ways to to, to solve the same problem but i think it was it was like vitalik who last year uh, or a couple of months ago he sent like this tweet out like what i expect from a ride sharing app keep it like really simple and that was our briefing basically to you know to, to try and create something uh, so anyway um oh yeah while i was talking um the offer has been released, we archive it, we just make it like dark and you, you can't click it anymore. So this is basically uh, the prototype um, we're trying to finalize uh, um, these days, like tonight probably. Um, um, but yeah, what, and hopefully you know, we'll, have six, we'll have some money in the, in the future to, to hire better developers than me.
he's a great developer, but I'm not. Um, so, yeah, any questions about this, maybe? Or do we have time for that? Questions. Like, yeah. You raise a question. Go ahead. Uh, what happens when two people want to claim the same right uh, at the same time? Okay, let's dive into the contract here. Stefan, you want to explain that? Yeah, so basically there is a there is one smart contract yeah. deployed, so which uh, contains the different uh, rights, um, also the different rights requests or the offers, like we say. Um, and so the whole blockchain has one state, uh, so either uh, one of these these rights is claimed or it's not. So different people, when it's still open, could try to do a transaction to say, I want to claim this, but in the end it will be the blockchain that resolves that problem because the first one who claims it, or it might be a random uh, random person claiming it, but you will never be in a situation that a right can be claimed twice, for example. So that's that's one thing the, the blockchain is also. But it's not how we will do this, you know, once we start the app for Arcade City. What we probably will do is, is, is let people negotiate over over kind of a chat channel, and then you can you know pick the driver that you find uh, most suitable for what you want to do. So this is just a really really basic proof of concept in which we <coughs> want to show yeah, that we can you know that we are familiar with this technology and that we can do this um, to to earn some trust hopefully. Also, the fun thing is that all all these concepts of that the traditional bank uses comes back in these <coughs> concepts because one of the things is that uh, before being able to access, so this contract needs to access um, funds from someone else, so they need to say, okay, I, you've created a new, um, a new right request, then the contract has to ask, can I take these 18 RC tokens and put it on my escrow contract, so you have to give an allowance, yeah? so you have to give uh, an allowance to that contract that is able to uh, to re um, retrieve some of the funds of your own account into into uh, the escrow uh, arrangement, and then you have all the logic of the escrow arrangement, which is quite simple to implement on, on a blockchain because you just have to you yeah, that's the that's the, the in out right? the, you know yeah like I wanted to see the allowance of proof yeah maybe you could do to claim first claim here's the claim. So if you want to claim the offer, so uh, what happens is that the, um, so the, you have the balance, we can, but maybe I'm skipping you over some, some of the details. Yeah. But there's do you want us to go to go in there? Uh, do, do you like the, this solidity? Kind of? No? Yeah, we're in a bit of time. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, you should so see those because we can talk about this for hours. I mean. More questions, Yuri? It's a bit related to the allowance so how do you handle that allowance from the user? Yeah. Okay. So we have been thinking about that. We have several solutions. Um, now we just don't show it, which is not nettiest. Uh, it's not like the best thing to do. Um, so probably it will be that the first time you buy tokens or you get the ARC token. Um, and you start up the app, we would ask, okay, you, you want to have an avatar image, you want to have a, a nickname or a handle, and, and then, okay, but and now you have to say how much money um, is pre-approved or is prepaid, you know, to, to the, yeah, we call it the in-out contract because it, it just takes mm -hmm. things. So we think we're going to do it a little bit like that, um, but we don't know. We don't know. I mean, we, we know how to do it, but the cool thing is now that we have this big community uh, the big swarm um, we can and, and this is it's it's I don't want to start crying but it's an amazing thing to have that because you know actually really uh, this night I will do a little build and I will throw it in a slack channel or on a Facebook group and by when I wake up we'll have so much feedback that you know it's, it's like it's amazing if if we used to do this like in a, in a company it that would take like three or four weeks before we get that feedback and now we have it like in the morning um, and also we are developing this together with these people that are not technical, they, they actually use it, they're driving, they're sometimes they're talking to us, uh, doing a hangout while they are driving in the city. So that's the fun part that we can immediately, we, we can do a, I can put up a build on Bitbaloon and just send a link to a couple of drivers in Austin and say, okay, what do you think about this? Do you like it? And we have feedback instantly. Um, 
So we don't know what, I mean, we don't have, we, we know some things, but we don't know, uh, we, I mean, that's what we're doing, right? We don't know how, how the community will want to work with us and, and how they would want to shape that app. <laughs> Sure. Also, I think you, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to add to that, yeah. that that we're trying to model this to things that people understand. If you have like your visa cards, it also has sort of an allowance to spend that much money <coughs> each month. And that might be one of the solutions that we implement here. So here you have like your <coughs> configuration, uh, your, your, uh, your configuration screen. You could also say, okay, what is my current allowance? So you, you say, okay, I can spend all my money that are all, all my art tokens here or just 100. And that allows it to just get be adjusted automatically. So in the beginning, we did it at the moment that you created your allowance, but that's that post. At the moment, you do a new offer. We said, okay, first we're gonna yep. IPFS, then we do an allowance, then we do the in-app contract, then we create the escrow. Uh, but and we actually uh, we we created like we deployed actually new contracts. You know, so every time somebody uh, entered, uh, put up an offer we created a new escrow contract and then you have the problem that you're like 10 blocks further in time uh, because yeah maybe too technical but yeah it slows things down so maybe last question for sure okay. so what is the this is, sounds quite useful but what is the point of having these tokens right to pay for the sure in ether? okay is there a bank in here community project like in Antwerp mm -hmm. I can kind of see it like people are doing voluntary work and maybe you don't want to put a money value on yeah. it although that's hard to avoid yeah. but this is you know supply and demand. So yeah. the price which would be neither exactly. Art. Exactly. But that's that, that question is, is, is it's an economic question. Um, as you know, the reason why we now have a euro and not uh, uh, guilders and Belgian francs and uh, French francs is because if you if you create a token, if you create one coin for a market and you can control that token, then you control the entire economy, right? We learn we know this. We all know this. Um, so basically what we are doing in Arcade City is creating a market that is isolated. And in the old economy, you would say like, no, you can't do that, right? You can't be the dictator of your own uh, market and some of that. That's what got us in all this shit in the first place. But there's only one way to, to consolidate the value. You know, the ARC token will represent the value of the total market of our users and especially the riders, you know, offering drives. Why don't we do that with Ether? Because Ether is, an, is, a for, is a value expression form for, you know, the Ether thingy, you know, like blockchain and, and paying for gas and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's, there's people that can explain this way better than me. I mean, but the reason why projects like these create their own tokens is to create uh, an, an, an isolated market where you can create value with people around uh, a theme. You're shaking no very much. Yeah. Why don't you explain that? No, no, no. Well, basically... No, I can't explain this very I, good. I, I, no, I'm I a developer. I saying. Like, I understand why you would want to create your own isolated uh, coin. However, that poses certain problems as well. Because, for instance, the gas you mentioned, you have to pay. I don't think you can pay that in art. No, no, of course not. So, you no, know, no, we're paying gas and either. Be a translation yeah. into yeah. a monetary value, whatever it is, Bitcoin, exactly. euros, whatever, mm -hmm. um, which is going to add at least a mental step of understanding your program. So, so what, why is that? What is the mental step? Well, basically, if you're going to ask for a ride, mm -hmm. you're going to be thinking, what am I going to pay for this ride? Yeah. How much is it going to be? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, of course, in the interface, you you would have dollars, euros, whatever you want, like anything. You know, it's just it's relative. I mean, if if you want to see the the if you want to see the app in euros or in dollars, you can do that. You can even say to the, the driver like, uh, okay, how much dollars is this gonna cost me? And he'll say like, it's twenty dollars. Okay. But but underlying, you know, the, the 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 transfer, the value transfer will happen with the ERC token. And our riders, our drivers, I'm sorry, um, are actually, it's one of the biggest problems that I've found in Ethereum. Like, I, I just, you know, where, where do I find cash? We don't have ATMs in Ethereum. You have some uh, bit, uh, Bitcoin uh, ATMs, but nah. It's, the cool thing is uh, with Arcade City is that every driver is our ATM. So the drivers have these tokens and they can just sell them to the, to the customer. So I would get in a car and I'd say, okay, what, what is this shit? I don't want to pay ARC tokens. They can just do it with, with cash too. They can do it in dollars and Bitcoin. 
We don't say they have to do it with ARC. But if you want to use the reputation that is built in, we can only mint reputation tokens You know, if, if we uh, trigger that contract. And we can only trigger that contract with ARC tokens. Um, uh, so in order, who's going to pay for the gas? So now we, we, we have, um, um, so with every transaction, a little fee will go to oh, a smart contract. Here, oh, you will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the real gas. <laughs> okay, but that, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry. I, I really need to explain this because you guys are going to love this. So, I have this, uh, it's maybe it's a little bit of advertising, but there's only one service. So, I have this Wirex app. You know, yes? it used to be eCoin, they just rebranded to Wirex. It's beautiful. So, I have two credit cards, like real, pla I, I have a problem because I drove with Sponet and then I don't bring my wallet. Um, so I don't have one here with me. Uh, but there's a, there's a simple app on my phone, it, it, it holds Bitcoin, it's like a wallet, and then I have my cards in there and I just swipe to my Euro uh, DBET card, it is. And then there's Shapeshift integrated in that. You know Shapeshift? It's like an easy way to do, do coin transfer, I like do uh, coin uh, exchanges. Um, so. You know, I just take my Ether and I put it on my credit card, debit card, and I can pay, like a second later, I can pay for gas or for in a restaurant. And I've been using this for months now. It's beautiful. Um, and um, uh, Shapeshift will be, uh, you know, how do you say, a list, or, or they will uh, include the ERC token as well. And because it starts with an A, it will be on top of the list, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. So drivers can just pay with their debit card. Yeah. I think I have to go off questions now. Uh, Michael and Stefan, where can people follow your project? Um, yeah, you can follow, if you if you surf to arcade.city, and then there's tons of links to GitHub, Slack, uh, we're on YouTube, <coughs> or Facebook even, because it's like, it's, it's, the, the, the swarm, the community is mostly on Facebook, but we are always in our, our Slack channel. And yeah, if you know, if, if, we, if, if, if we survive till uh, November 1st, then maybe we, we will be doing this for a long time. Yeah. What's Arcade BNB? Sorry? Arcade BNB? Arcade BNB, yeah. That's something. So, New York, uh, last week, New York, uh, um, I don't know if they banned it or what, what was it? Uh, it changed one legislation. Tax. Oh, yeah, they changed some like legislation and tax uh, incentives. And um, so, peop so, before we knew, before Arcade City is even started, people are starting the Twitter handle Arcade BNB. And some of the swarm guys from Texas are now traveling to New York to start up a new swarm of people doing, uh, yeah, Airbnb, but with in, in this, you know, the philosophy. So the idea of Arcade City is it's not only ride sharing; it's just the first thing we're gonna do because it's really tangible. People can relate to that. I just want to go from A to B. It's easy. It's nothing blockchain. It's uh, so people can understand this. But next, of course, uh, that's only the first game in Arcade City. Our games will be babysitting, uh, Airbnb kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, everybody can start their own games, so we don't know what people will come up with. Okay, let's follow this fascinating project. So people have been talking about app coins for for years now. So we can follow a project that has impact in real life. Give a big hand to Michael and. <laughs> There are about 80 snacks and 40 beers outside, so normally we have this at the end, but I'm going to ask you, you have two minutes to fetch two snacks and one beer come in and have the rest of the small talks and, uh, and uh, the Pascal's uh, talk. So, two minutes.